AI in Action is brought to you by Aulis International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host, Mark Kelly, brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldis.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guests today are Jacob Schiff, who is co-founder and COO at Anomaly. With him is Leonard Appelston, who is head of data science at Anomaly. Welcome to the show. Thank Thank you very much. Great to be here. Excellent. Well, let's start with background of yourselves. Jacob and Leonard, can you each give, give a brief insight into where you first got started in technology, what your journey has been like, some of the roles you've held along the way, taking us up to the, the formation of Anomaly? So this is Jacob. I uh, started my career at Google, uh, working on the launch of consumer and enterprise products around the world, including Android, AdWord product launches in the the US, UK, India, Canada. Um, I'd always been interested in health tech. Uh, I'd been a biology major as an undergraduate. So I eventually left Google to get an MBA at Stanford with my goal being to combine my interests in healthcare and technology and also to explore early stage startups and also to uh, deepen my technical background with coursework in Stanford's computer science department. After Stanford, I I moved back out to New York, uh, where I worked in product at Flatiron Health, a health tech company focused on oncology, which I understand you previously profiled on this podcast as well. Um, Eventually, I moved to Redesign Health, a healthcare innovation platform focused on funding and launching healthcare companies. Redesign is backed by hundreds of millions of dollars of capital and has a full-time team and a network of industry partners that enables it to launch ambitious companies that are going after some of the biggest problems in healthcare. And it was while at Redesign Health that I initiated the company that has grown into Anomaly and which is focused on one of the largest and most pressing of those problems in healthcare, uh, namely fraud, waste, and abuse. That that's a great segue, and we'll we'll jump into anomaly in a bit more detail. But Leonard, let's get a, a, f- a few minutes on yourself, your background, and obviously taking us up to your your lead role here at head of data science for anomaly. Perfect. So, 15 years ago, I had moved out to the Bay Area to pursue my PhD in biomedical informatics, and I quickly realized that for a poor student living in pricey San Francisco, it's not always easy to uh, pay the rent, uh, which is why I wound up launching my own data science consultancy on uh, the side to try and get an extra stream of uh, uh, income. Uh, and the consultancy basically required me to call the email a whole bunch of startups asking, hey, do you guys have any data need analyzed? And kind of in this way, I was also able to make uh, form deeper connections with the local Bay Area entrepreneurial community. Through those connections, eventually after I graduated, I was asked to join the founding team of a startup that applied uh, AI and machine learning techniques to uh, text analysis and natural language processing. Now, this might seem like quite a pivot going from uh, biology to NLP, but if you look at the nature of my graduate research, which involved studying sequences of nucleic acids in a DNA strand, in a way, it's not that different from studying sequence of words in text documents. I mean, the main difference is uh, with, with text documents, you don't have to uh, spend six months in a lab trying to validate the output of your algorithms. You can just read the document and make sure that everything is working as appropriate. Uh, So at the startup, I was uh, put in charge of building out our uh, foundational algorithms. And over the course of five years, we did pretty good for ourselves. I helped grow the team out from four people to nearly 100 people. And I was feeling proud of Uh, all that we had accomplished. But at the same time, I began to miss my foundational roots in healthcare. 
So I decided to uh, disengage from the company and look for entrepreneurial opportunities in the healthcare, healthcare space. After a brief stint as a health innovation fellow at the Berkeley Institute for Data Science, I uh, was introduced to Jacob and the Anomaly co-founders, and I quickly realized that not only is fraud, waste, and abuse a billion-dollar drain on the United States healthcare system, but that also this very important problem was well poised to be tackled by the amazing advances in AI and machine learning that we've seen over the course of the past uh, uh, decade. So when asked to uh, join as Anomaly's head of data science, I immediately pounced on that opportunity, and it's been an amazing journey ever since. Excellent. I appreciate that, Leonard. Um, so you've touched on what threw you to Anomaly uh, and clearly a combination of your expertise in data science and then your, your background in healthcare. So, Jacob, taking it back to you, you've given us some insight into your background and um, the role at Redesign Health. And then you talked about how this led to uh, the, the origins of Anomaly. But can you give us some more insight into the, the objective and how Anomaly is, is tackling this massive problem of, of excess spend and overcharging and all of the problems that are, exist within, within healthcare finances? Yeah, of course. Uh, I'll give a little more context on, on how the Anomaly story came to be. So while I was at Redesign Health, I was deeply researching areas in, in healthcare that drive significant costs. I was speaking with industry thought leaders, I was interviewing patients, I was reading white papers. And throughout this exploration, a theme kept on coming up again and again, and that was this problem of, of fraud, waste, and abuse, or also known as FWA. Um, there are many types of FWA from submitting duplicate claims to billing manipulations like upcoding and unbundling to true fraud like billing for services that were never rendered, identity theft, soliciting kickbacks. All of these different types of fraud, waste, and abuse add up to a truly staggering cost in the healthcare system. We're looking at over 10% of, of healthcare spend, over $300 billion per year in the United States uh, is lost to improper payments due to fraud, waste, abuse, and error. And for context, can you, can you imagine if that was the case with your credit card, where every month you got your bill and 10% of the charges were incorrect, the, the wrong amount, purchases you never made? You know, that's that's the case in the healthcare system in the U.S., and it's in large part because of the complexity of the system. Beyond the staggering financial statistics, though, as I dived into this issue, I also learned about the human impact of FWA. I, I heard stories, including from friends, uh, about the, the impact of inexplicably high costs on their ability to access care. Uh, there has been an emerging research in the Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA, about the, the safety impact to patients who are exposed to providers engaging in the most egregious cases of fraud and abuse. And it, it became clear that FWA was both a massive financial and a quality of care issue. Uh, which I've heard as a sleeping giant. Uh, the second insight, which I really knew from my experiences at, at Google, Stanford, Flatiron Health, was that as Leonard alluded to earlier, this is really the perfect problem where you can apply a lot of the technical innovations that we've seen over the past couple of years uh, and beyond when it comes to applying new techniques to this problem. And you know, uh, one of our advisors who led data science efforts in fraud detection at a national health insurance company or payer said, uh, and I quote, the, the industry standard for fraud, waste, and abuse detection is only scratching the surface of what we can do and what's possible. And that's because you're looking at massive amounts of structured, unstructured data uh, and can really do a lot more with technology. So basically, it came down to a recognition that this is a, a large financial and patient safety issue with significant underserved customers and an opportunity to build a better solution. And that was the context in which Anomaly was born. Uh, a company developing cutting edge technology to reduce fraud, waste and abuse and enable what, what we've been calling precision payments, ensuring the right amount is paid the first time. So great insight into what is an, an incredibly large problem um, that definitely needs solving. So how are Anomaly tackling this issue? Yeah, so we've brought together 
an amazing team of, of engineers and data scientists, really deep domain experts. This domain is often referred to as payment integrity. Uh, and then payer and benefits leaders who really understand the, the business of healthcare and how do we bring a new solution to market. So our team includes the, the former head of engineering at Redesign Health and Foursquare, uh, the former CEO of United Healthcare's commercial business, former senior exec from Apple's artificial intelligence group, Optim, Cotivity, Enigma, and other uh, healthcare and tech companies. And this cross-functional team is really what's required to successfully tackle this challenge of fraud, waste, and abuse. Um, since our founding in 2020, we've been building out our technology using proprietary data sources to identify FWA in healthcare claims, and we've been seeing some, some very exciting results. Our first product is Anomaly Recover, which is focused on identifying and recovering inappropriately paid healthcare claims for our clients. And our second product, which is currently in development, is Anomaly Prevent, which will stop improper payments before they occur, similar to how your credit card company will suspend a fraudulent transaction before payment. We're currently working with a select group of inaugural customers, including Fortune 500 employers and payers. And we've successfully identified millions of dollars of overpayments in our clients' healthcare spend. So over to you, Leonard. What's the, the AI and data science behind the scenes uh, that is driving this forward? How is Anomaly using this technology to bring these products to market? Well, in order to fight fraud, waste, and abuse, it helps to take a holistic perspective. Like, for instance, let's say you want to know whether a particular lab test administered to a patient was appropriate or not. To answer that question, you need context. It helps to know the patient's diagnosis, to know their medical history, to know the series of sequential interactions between the patient and the provider, uh, to know the provider's uh, medical specialty and how they usually treat patients within that specialty and to be able to compare that provider to uh, their peers and competitors within that specialty. Uh, given all these various sources and signals of information, you want to squeeze out one single holistic signal, which again, sounds complex, but by analogy, you could look at a uh, an, anal an analogous. You could, by analogy, you can look at an analogous problem in uh, natural language processing. Like, let's say you want to uh, analyze restaurant reviews, and you want to know whether uh, the reviews are positive or negative. Well, the simplest thing you could do is just match keywords to the text of the reviews, and keyword matching will give you results that perform kind of okay. But of course, you won't be able to achieve high accuracy because text is more than each individual word. A text document represents a holistic sequential flow of oral words within the text that yield meaning from uh, uh, within the text. You need to read the review as a whole. You also need to know what type of restaurant you're looking at because a review for a fancy French restaurant will use very different language than a review for a burger joint at the side of the highway. And again, this is an example of a challenging problem that has mostly been solved. Over the past few years, we've seen amazing progress in AI tools that can take uh, diverse sequential text documents and really squeeze out a holistic signal that allows you to classify and understand uh, that text. And in many ways, these techniques from natural language processing are transferable to insurance data because in some ways, insurance data represents the language of healthcare. Only instead of uh, having sequences of words that make up sentences and documents, you have sequences of diagno diagnoses and procedures uh, recorded in the data, which represents a patient's history, which represents the provider's history of interacting within, you know, with their patients. And so by applying these new AI techniques uh, coming from natural language processing and elsewhere, we are able to 
squeeze out a holistic signal from all the data to understand how providers should act under certain circumstances holistically and how whether or not their behavior deviates from uh, from those expectations. And in this way, we can totally nail down fraud, waste and abuse. And that ties in nicely to, to Jacob's point about solving the big problems that exist in this space. Can you give us some insight into the, the, the roadmap from a data science perspective? What are the steps that you and your team need to take to, to go from the first phase product into the next advancements? Um, well, right now we are uh, working uh, with our in-house domain experts, like brilliant people that have years upon years of experience looking through fraud, waste, and abuse. We're working with them to uh, validate and improve these models. And for validation purposes, having an accurate model is a great start, but it's not sufficient. You need interpretability. Uh, we need our domain experts to be able to go and look at the model's predictions and say, uh, well, in this prediction, you, the model believes there's an instance of fraud, waste, and abuse, and according to the logic employed by the model, the model is dead on. Or you need the domain expert to say, well, uh, the, model log the model's logic needs a little tweaking here and here because this particular claim is an exceptional case. Validation is a hard problem because a lot of these advanced AI techniques are black boxes. And right now, my team is working on shining a light inside the black box in order to reveal the inner mechanisms, which will uh, make it easier, much easier for our domain experts to understand exactly what is going on in the models so they can help improve those models. We're also, uh, in the coming months, we'll, we're, we'll be heavily working on making sure that the models run uh, faster much faster. And this is important from a tactical standpoint. As Jacob alluded to earlier, uh, there's generally two tactics for fighting fraud, waste, and abuse. Uh, there's what we call post-pay, in which we, let's say, analyze one year's worth of claims, uh, go, aha, here's an instance of fraud, waste, and abuse from six months ago. Let's go and recover that value for our customers. Uh, and there's also a more preventative approach where you stop fraud, waste, and abuse from happening in the first place by having your model flag a suspicious payment request as it goes out, prepay. And uh, we right now we've been very, very much focused on postpay. We want to uh, transition to prepay as quickly as possible. The issue with prepay is that our models need to work uh, quickly. Uh, they need to work rapidly in order to, it, they need to basically be able to classify the data in a matter of hours, uh, not days. And for context, I want to add that we have a lot of data. Uh, we are dealing with one of the uh, largest uh, proprietary assets, some of which have thousands upon thousands of claims, which is great because a lot of these new techniques are very data hungry. You need millions of claims to tr train them properly. And fortunately, we have that data at hand. So the next challenge is how do we scale up our algorithms for them to be able to process these millions of claims at a much rapid pace so we can prevent fraud, waste and abuse mm -hmm. from happening in the first place. So an exciting uh, bunch of projects in store and it's going to keep you guys very busy for, for the months and years to come. Um, you mentioned your data science team, so I want to get your take on the types of people that you need and you've got around you in order to, to work on these projects. And as it grows over time, what do you look for in data science candidates? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, data science at a startup like Anomaly is done a bit differently than data science at a uh, larger, well established, more established organization uh, or let's say an academic lab because we need to innovate and run experiments testing out new algorithms like other data science teams. Yes, uh, but for us, the sense of urgency is very important. We need to act quickly. And we need to fail quickly in order to increase of our rate of success week after week, months after months. The quicker we fail, the quicker we succeed, the quicker we provide value to our customers and prevent FWA. Uh, also at Anomaly, 
whenever a new data science experiment or technique is tried out and it is successful, that's the great start to a story. That's not the end of the story uh, because we then need to be able to take uh, that experiment and the code associated with that experiment and make it production ready. Our data scientists need to be uh, engineers as well. They got to clean up their code and push it into production uh, as soon as possible once the code has been like validated in order to ensure that we provide uh, uh, value and benefit to our customers as quickly as uh, possible. With uh, this in mind, uh, Anomaly has a kind of a very carefully orchestrated uh, and well-structured interview process in order for us to be able to uh, find those candidates that best align with our uh, internal uh, code of values that have been carefully uh, selected to ensure that Anomaly is able to grow and succeed as a company. So over to you, Jacob. Um... Look, obviously, this has been an exciting journey thus far. Looking ahead, what's in store for Anomaly over the next 12 to 18 months from a project perspective, from a headcount goal? What do you expect to happen and what are you most excited about? We're, we're very excited about 2021 20, and beyond. Uh, our, our focus breaks down across sales, product, and people. On the sales side, we'll be scaling up our efforts by working with some of the largest employers and payers who are interested in reducing these very significant costs of fraud, waste, and abuse in their healthcare spend. Um, on the product side, we'll be continuing to build out our technology, which uh, Leonard described earlier, mainly detecting more fraud, waste, and abuse, so yeah, adding additional models and also improving the precision of those models. And then, of course, we've mentioned a few times now our, our prepay solution, Anomaly Prevent, which will be a big focus for us in 2021. And then finally, on the people side, we'll be investing on building out our team, especially on the data science and engineering side, looking for candidates like those that, that Leonard described a moment ago. Very exciting times. Leonard and Jacob, I really appreciate you coming on and, and talking to us about uh, everything that's happening at Anomaly. Uh, clearly a, a huge uh, market space, um, very exciting um, offering that you guys have. And I'm sure that, you know, with the backing of Redesign, who have a, a track record of, of kicking off amazing organizations, uh, Anomaly will will grow, grow fast and and the sooner the better for, for all of us who, who uh, are in this space. So thank you very much again, guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, JP. AI Action is brought to you by Aldus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Aldus offer an exec search program. Aldus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. For more information, contact mark at aldus.com. Get the Aldus advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to Aldus members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career, and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus.com. That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.